Hi friends, welcome to the second video on group theory. This video will concentrate on the properties of group theory. There are going to be five properties which will be covered under the topics of properties of group. We need to first keep in mind that a group is going to be a non-empty set G along with an binary operation star that is going to satisfy closure. The second one is called as associative law and the third one is called as existence of identity. The fourth one is called as existence of inverse. So if these four laws are going to be true on a non-empty set that in which the operation star is being defined then you call it to be a group. Now let us assume that G star is going to be a group then cancellation law is going to be true for a group that is for any elements a b and c that belong to g if a star b is equal to a star c this b and c will be the one remaining the a over here can be cancelled off which is a is present in your left so you call it as left cancellation law and if b star a is the same as c star a then you can notice that a over here which is present in your right is going to be the same and that can be cancelled off leading you to again b equal to c which is called as right cancellation law. Now how to go about the proof? Since we have only element a belonging to g, we know that a inverse also belong to g because g being a group uh, inverse is going to be guaranteed for all the elements. So what do we do is we pre-multiply our equation number 1 over here with our a inverse. So I have a star b to be equal to a star c. What do I do? I pre-multiply or, or uh, I do the binary operation with my a star b. Now when I do the a inverse on your both sides by your associative law being true I can flip my brackets to get my a star a and this will be a star a again with uh, C left out. I know that identity element A star A is nothing but my E. I have E star B and this again A inverse A is my E and this is going to be my C. Now by identity element when I am multiplying anything with identity element it returns back to be my original element. So I have B equal to C. In the same way the second proof over here can be taken and then instead of pre-multiplying you do the post multiplication then the second thing can be proved. The second one is that the property says the identity element of a group is going to be unique. There is going to be only one element that can act as an identity element. If possible let us assume that there are going to be two identity elements say E1 and E2 which are not the same. So if I take E1 as the identity element then for any element A belonging to G I know that E1 star A must give me the same as A star E1 which is giving me back my element called A. If I assume that E2 is going to be my identity element instead of E1 then for the same A I have E2 star A to be the same as A star E2 which will give me back my A. Now I know that these two A's are going to be the same and hence by comparison I have my E star A to be equal to E2 star A. Just now we saw the cancellation law which says any element which is common either to the left or right can be cancelled off. So when I am going to cancel off the elements over here towards my right then I will be ending up with E1 and E2. But what did we begin the assumption with E1 not equal to E2. So there cannot be two different identity elements but these identity elements are going to be one and the same. So which says that the identity element is going to be unique always. The next thing is that inverse of an element of a group is going to be unique. So if an element has an inverse, its inverse is just going to be one single one. So it is going to be unique. If possible, let us assume that there are going to be two inverses for the element called as A. So one element we assume that B is an inverse and for the same A we also assume that C is going to be the inverse and we have taken the quantity that B is not equal to C. So if I assume that B is the inverse of A then I have A star B to be the same as B star A which gives me back the identity element E 
And if I assume that C is the inverse, I have A star C to be the same as C star A, which gives me back the identity element called as E. If this E is going to be the same from my equation number 1 and 2, and now I know my right hand side also, the quantity where I begin over here, this also has to be same. So if I have my A star B to be the same as A star C, I know by cancellation law, this E can be cancelled off leading U to B equal to C. But what did we begin with? P not equal to C. So why is this um, uh, contradiction happening? That was due to the assumption that there are going to be two inverses. So you don't have two inverses. The inverses are going to be one and the same. So you know that the inverse element of an element in a group is always going to be unique in nature. Next comes the property which states that for any element A and B belonging to G, we have A star B to be the whole inverse is B inverse star A inverse. That is, if you have A star B and then you have its inverse which is going to be A star B, the whole inverse, I can show that when I do the binary operation over here, then this has to give me E. So if I am going to prove that this quantity is going to be the same as my B inverse star A inverse, then we are done. So what we do is we show that the inverse of A star B is going to be B inverse star A inverse. It is enough to prove that A star B into what we have to prove, this is going to be B inverse star A inverse. So if I take or replace this position by B inverse star A inverse, I will have to get E. So can we do it? Yes, we will begin with A star B and we do the binary operation with B inverse star A inverse. Now, in the next step, by associative law, I am going to flip the brackets for the element B and B inverse so that I take the value of B star B inverse to be equal to E. And now this gives me A star E star A inverse. Now take the brackets for the next two elements and I know that identity element multiplied or binary operated with any element will give you the same element. So what happens over here? We are left out with A star A inverse. An element the binary operated with is inverse has to give me the identity element E. Yes. So now we have reached the quantity called as E which proves that a star B, the whole inverse, is the same as B inverse star A inverse. Moving on to the last property, which says that the only element which satisfies the idempotent law is going to be the identity element. What do we mean by idempotent law? An element that satisfies A star A is A is called as idempotent law. If there is possible, let there be any other element called as A apart from E, that is going to satisfy the idempotent law. So in which case, if E is not the identity element that satisfies idempotent, then I know that A star A is A. By the identity element's existence, I know that A star E is the same as E star A, which is equal to A. So what do I have? Is A star A is going to satisfy idempotent law? So it is A. And I also know that A star E is the same as E star A, which will give me A. Now, if these two quantities are the same, then these two quantities have to be the same. So I have A star A to be the same as A star E. Now, by my left cancellation law, I have A to be the one and same as my E. So the contradiction appears over here that I assume that A is not equal to E. So the only element that is going to satisfy the idempotent law will be the identity element. I hope this five properties I have given you an insight on how to handle problems on the groups. Now the detailed works on problems of groups will be discussed in our next video. Keep awaiting. Happy learning. Keep learning.